Good evening. It's our week seven business 630 lecture video. <clears throat> Tonight, our topic is strategies that drive capital decision rate making, more specifically mergers and acquisitions. I'm sure some of you maybe in your business careers up to this point have been involved where a company you work for has been merged or acquired by another company. Uh, we're going to we're going to take a look at that this evening. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, take a look at uh, case number three very briefly uh, because we still have some students working on it. So I'm not going to talk too much about it, but we'll go over it a little bit briefly. And then uh, we're going to mention that we're going to have an Electrics Incorporated review session uh, for this Saturday morning. Uh, the link is in Blackboard in week seven. If any of you have or your team have questions or concerns heading into this final week of study, uh, we have a review session this Saturday morning that also will be recorded. It'll be at nine o'clock this Saturday morning. So that's our topics for this evening. Um, on, on the subject of case number three, uh, uh, one of the reasons why I had you do case number three, and all, most of you or all of you have done very well on it, is basically to practice the scenario and sensitivity analysis because that's part of the, the work you have to do in the Electrics Incorporated. The Electrics Corporation gives you three different scenarios of sales of units and also gives you two variables of the sensitivity analysis to perform a risk analysis for that project in a spreadsheet. So case number three was designed for you to practice that and know the get familiar with the procedures of that so you can do it in your Electrics case. All right, the grades have been posted to case number three. They are in Blackboard and any uh, file, any students who uh, ha had, I had corrected some of their work, I returned your files to Blackboard for you to download. The solutions will be posted as soon as I get all the work in from uh, the students who have remaining. We had a couple of students who were traveling and uh, I gave them a couple of days to post. So that's the, the solutions are not available quite yet, but they will be. So take a look at that grade. Most of you would take a look at your grade average coming into this last two weeks of our course. Remember, we next week we have two assignments that are going to be due, uh, case number four and uh, the electrics case. Case number four will be posted next Monday It'll involve chapters 22 and 19 and the articles of reading discussion for this evening. So let me show you that those articles right now. OK, I'm in our Blackboard file folder, which I'm sure some of you are about ready to hit the highway with. You've had about enough, but understandably so. If you go to week number seven, You'll see our introduction video, our agenda for this evening. And here's the link to Saturday's review session at 9 a.m. It'll go to approximately about 10, 1030. I will review any items that any of you call in or email in or visit the Zoom session and ask and have any issues. I will be available to answer any of those questions Saturday morning and review them with you at 9 o'clock this Saturday morning, October 9th. And there's the link to that session. Also this week, I'd like you, in addition to reviewing chapter 22 and the, uh, power, and the PowerPoint or and or the videos provided you, is to read and download these two articles. Two articles I'd like you to read. Measures that drive performance. Many of you have heard about the SWOT analysis. This is another type of analysis that explain performance and issues. It's, and you will read about it. Uh, that's why I want you to, to download that. Measures that drive performance and strategies without disrupting your organizations. I'm sure a lot of you have worked in companies where somebody new comes in or a new supervisor comes in and tries to change things around and all hell breaks loose. Everybody's in a lather, disrupting the, the normal way of doing things has changed and it creates a lot of confusion and issues. I would like you to read that article as well. That'll lead us into our discussion uh, next week in case number four. Strategies that drive performance, excuse me, measures that drive performance and strategy without disrupting your organization. Please read those two articles this week.
This video segment discusses mergers and acquisitions in the context of strategic management. Merger and acquisition activity is extremely important in strategic management as we continue to see larger and larger deals in front of us. One of the more recent in the acquisition area is that of Google's proposed acquisition of the Motorola cell phone business for $12.5 billion. This signals Google's desire to further diversify away from its search engine business into an area it thinks has great potential for profits. It's instructive to differentiate between merger and acquisitions because they are quite different. In a merger, what you'll have is two firms of somewhat similar size that just combine their assets and their names typically become combined as well. You may recall the failed merger some dozen years ago between Daimler and Chrysler. Their names uh, became merged. Acquisitions are quite different. This is a situation where you find a larger or more cash rich firm buying a smaller organization. The smaller organization then comes uh, the subsidiary of the larger organization. If the Motorola acquisition goes through, Motorola will, will become a subsidiary of Google. In the not too distant past, Kraft paid $20 billion to purchase Cadbury. Kraft is a uh, United States convenience food manufacturer, and Cadbury is a confectioner into chocolates and chewing gum, and they are located in the United Kingdom. Kraft paid almost $20 billion to purchase all the assets of Cadbury. In the business press, we quite often see merger and acquisition activity discussed interchangeably, but these terms mean something very different, as you can see from this and uh, from this slide as well. In the situation of mergers, you have a situation where either the names become combined or one of the parents may become the dominant player and they're simply named after uh, the larger or the more dominant organization which comes through in a merger. One of the parents, regardless of how their name changes or does not change, usually uh, emerges as the dominant management team. I don't know what the case in Sirius XM Radio is, but I do know that Daimler, a, a German company, became the dominant management team of Daimler Chrysler some years ago. In acquisitions, you have a situation where the acquire or, which was Kraft Foods in, the, in this case of uh, Cadbury, just buys out all the firm stock. So they bought all of Cadbury stock for uh, nearly $20 billion. And these types of uh, activities can be either friendly or hostile um, for the acquiree. There are several types of merger and acquisition activity, and I'm going to detail five. Vertical activity in mergers and acquisitions could be simply to buy a supplier or customers. So they're vertically going forward or backward to streamline their cost structure. And Johnson & Johnson acquired some time ago Mentor, which is a latex glove company, among other things, to, to complement its products to become a supplier to other divisions of Johnson & Johnson, hence streamlining its cost structure. In the case of horizontal merger and acquisition activity, we see a situation where you merge or acquire a competitor. And we've seen that in the recent past in so much is that the um, uh, Dutch firm InBev bought out Anheuser-Busch, thus reducing their competition to some extent. Product extension is a situation where you're buying complementary products or acquiring them to fit your portfolio. And in this case, Kraft's acquisition of Cadbury is a perfect example of complementary complementary products. It also exemplifies market extension, which is where you want to go into different markets. Uh, if you studied the Cadbury Kraft acquisition, probably the main reason that Kraft wanted Cadbury so badly is that Cadbury does very, very well in some emerging markets where Kraft does not do very well. Uh, and namely, those two markets are India and Brazil. Cadbury does very, very well there. Kraft has had minimal success and hopes to piggyback off Cadbury's uh, leverage in those two large emerging economies um, for Kraft to do well. And that's market extension. And then there's also a, this unrelated firm of merger and acquisition activity. We call it conglomerate merger and acquisition activity. And this is a constant strategy that General Electric undergoes. General Electric, if you look at their um, 
their web page or their annual report, they are into uh, a wide host of products from light bulbs to appliances to jet engines uh, to you know medical imaging products in the uh, healthcare industry and, all, and and many more industries as well so it buys firms that are uh, quite different but um, at the same time it diversifies their way of their uh, total risk by being involved in a lot of different industries the logic behind this related merger and acquisition activity when you buy something that's related or you merge two firms that are related what you hope is that you have value creation and that is what's hoped from the you know the, the uh, merger between Sirius and XM they need to create value because both firms were losing money and we examine this when talking about the value chain uh, part of that value creation is going to become from cost reductions hopefully through economies of scale or a larger new satellite radio organization being the new merged company and also another value creating activity we see called economies of scope and that is situations where firms can share competencies and really this goes back to the value chain as well they can share branding name content uh, subscribers etc there are some implementation issues in mergers and acquisition activity and, you know no better illustrated than in the case of Daimler and Chrysler and that's in cultural differences a German organization merging with a US organization merger and ac acquisition activity always requires the merging of two different cultures whether they be from two different countries or from the same country you're still gonna have two different and often quite uh, disparate organizational cultures that was a big problem for Daimler and Chrysler cultural merging involves a number of things it among other things it involves the combination of elements of two different cultures management styles products customers etc it's interesting to see what's going to happen if the Google acquisition of Motorola happens and the craft acquisition of Cadbury as of the speaking of late 2011 is already complete and we still have not seen yet the full effect of the combination of both uh, both cultures we do know in the case of uh, uh, Kraft that Cadbury has fought this over in the United Kingdom kingdom because they're not happy about an American company buying out their their company and s many are unsure about their stability uh, as an organization going forward they can craft and might take the chocolate company and move it back to the United States so it's difficult costly um, and, and it's not always possible to pull off a merger and acquisition from the implementation side one last thing I'll say is that merger and acquisition activity is, is kind of risky uh, but it's especially risky in the international uh, side research shows that 70 percent of all mergers or acquisitions that take place between firms from different countries are going to fail so if you think about that uh, your odds of making a merger or acquisition work when you have headquarters from two separate countries your odds are not very good okay that video was an excellent <clears throat> video uh, highlighting uh, the key points of mergers and acquisitions what type of mergers and acquisitions there are, vertical, horizontal, et cetera, and the, the culture and the relationship of the two businesses that are being acquired or merging is very important. And this is one of the things I wanna get, this, this video plus the introduction video are excellent, fairly short videos that pretty well highlight the whole topic of merger and acquisition. So I, please, I hope you can both see those two videos uh, this week. Those two articles that I referred to earlier, I want to talk a little bit about them and how important they are for you in the context of our study. And many of you in other classes in your academic career have probably done SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats. Well, here in, the, in this class and, and at this level of uh, MBA study, there is what is called a balance scorecard approach. This is a little bit different than the SWOT analysis. And I want you to read this article and learn a little bit about this because I'm gonna be asking you uh, to relate this question or this scorecard analysis to a uh, issue in case number four. And the balanced scorecard approach doesn't look at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It looks at financial, customer, innovation, and internal business perspectives within an organization. 
how do the how is the change or how is the company who is producing these strategy how are these being measured performance wise financially are you making money customer wise is there much customer complaints customer services innovation and learning are we providing growth to our employees to our to our customers are we providing innovation new technology and finally internal business perspectives. Are we managing our company better? Are, is the lines of control, the lines of power within a company making the company be more efficient? So this is another way of looking at strategic measurements of a, how, how a company is doing. I know when I, was, when I was running my business, I used a SWOT analysis to take a look at a a possible decision and, and the SWOT analysis of it. But once I made the decision and I was looking at how that decision strategically was playing out, I would use the balanced scorecard measurement to view, view on how that was affecting these four areas of my business. So this is a very good article, especially for some of you who are in management or supervisory capabilities, understanding this balanced scorecard measurement approach to determining strategic decision-making is a very good approach. The second article that I want you to read is a very good article about how to implement a strategy without screwing everything up, okay? And this is a, this is a tough question for a lot of managers and a lot of people running businesses, or if you're starting a business on your own and you, with an ego, hey, this is my company, I can do any, anything I want. Well, to a point, because if your decision making disrupts the people who work for you, or your customers, or your investors, you got a problem. So uh, this article is a very good study of how change, or how to process change within an organization can dis without disrupting it. And this is a great article. Uh, it concentrates on two business models. I want you to read this article also for this next week. Hey, another look uh, just briefly at the checklist for the electrics case. I know a lot of you are neck deep in doing this this weekend and this, this week. So I wanted to uh, just go over a couple of things that are important and, and, and some of the work that I have seen where we need to take a look at. First of all, where it comes to the warranty cost. Remember the warranty for the controller MT78 and the um, controller, um, just a sec, I just had a thing happen to my computer, just a sec. Here we go, sorry about that. We had a little power surge here in my home and uh, that happens every now and then where I live. So my computer was going wacky, so I'm back. Okay, so uh, in the warranty cost we are talking about, remember, it's, uh, we have two controllers. The controller, which is the main uh, reason why the unit can become electrical. Uh, the CTX-13 has $165 a year for five years as a warranty. The MT-78 has $175 a year. The $75 is on the, the unit, okay? The $90 and $100 is on the specific controller. Remember, there's two price structures here. There's the electric motor and there's the controller. The controller makes the electric motor electric. So that's how this works. So you have $165 and $175 each year for five years, going out five years. And the analysis is to do the discounted cash flow of those five years of costs back to one value at your discount rate and also include inflation in that calculation. You come up with one number and that's your variable cost per every unit produced for every year of, of those units. And that amount stays the same every year throughout the life of the eight years of this project. So that's something to remember as you're crunching these numbers this week. Remember the depreciation schedule is the marginal accelerated cost recovery for the $17 million investment over eight years. And as some of you are finding out, wait a minute, Mr. Hasse, there's a seven year schedule and a 10 or 11 year schedule, where's eight? Well, look at the seven year schedule closely and you'll get the answer for that one. 
And finally, the risk analysis at the bottom of this checklist, we do a scenario analysis with the 40,000, 40,500, and 40,750 units scenarios at weak, average, and strong. And each one of those has a different selling price for the unit for your scenario analysis. And then the sensitivity analysis is for two variables, the sales price per unit and the cost of the controller per unit. And those percentages, which are given in the rubric, are plus or minus 5, 10, and 15%. So as you begin to wind down and crunch all the numbers and begin to write your paper, just to make sure that you check this checklist, and I'll repost this back to week number seven uh, as a reminder of where these issues are and make sure you account for them correctly. Okay, just a couple last points to make it before we uh, close out this uh, short but sweet uh, lecture video for week number seven. Uh, remember our timeline, you've already posted October, uh, for October 3rd yesterday, your case number three, the grades have been posted to Blackboard. The next work will be next week, which will be case number four, which will talk about mergers and acquisitions, leasing. But the mergers and acquisitions will just be uh, kind of a macro questions, nothing specific. You don't have to do any calculations, just some macro topics about strategies that drive mergers and acquisitions from those two articles that I gave you this week. Then you have your case paper due also on the 17th. Uh, the evaluations are due, uh, technically they're due the 18th. And I'll talk more about the evaluations next week. There is a, the evaluations for any of you students who have uh, been in the program for a while, they're new this year. Uh, they're not as uh, short and sweet as they were in the past. Uh, there's a new procedures for evaluations. I will provide that link for you. The evaluations are up and running effective tomorrow, October 6th. And I will post that link in week number seven for the evaluations that you click on this evaluation and then you proceed to do that. Remember, if you do your evaluations, I will post your final course grade on Thursday, October 21st. So we'll talk more about that uh, as we go forward into the last week. So again, we have a review session on uh, Saturday morning, in case you have any open items uh, for your electrics case, uh, you feel free to send me your, your spreadsheets. If you want me to look them over, I'd be more than happy to let you know that you're in the right direction. But as of now, with over a week to go in this paper and case number four next week, you should be pretty well finished with your number crunching and beginning to work with your team members to write the paper. All right, everybody, that's, our, uh, that's it for week number seven, only a one week to go. You're all doing, in, um, doing great in this course. The grades are wonderful. You're doing very well. And I appreciate your efforts up to this for, far, far. We have one week left and then we're, we're all done. So thanks everybody. This is Professor Hassey signing off and we'll talk to you soon. Adios. <laughs>